you're the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to show you my workspace because I did get a lot of requests for a workspace tour. This is where I have been sitting lately. Um, if you know the saga of my cold basement, um, <laughs> I have been working down here. I actually really love working in my basement. My only gripe is the cold. And um, when I sit here, I can actually have a space heater nearby and stay relatively warm while I'm working. I have a little, I have a little coat on the back of my my chair if I get a little chilly and. Um, um, it actually works pretty well. I noticed that once I'm kind of in the zone, in the kind of that flow state, that creative state, I don't even notice being cold anymore. So, um, and it's not like, you know, I'm toiling away in freezing temperatures. I'm talking like mid 50s to mid 60s. So, um, <laughs> so first world problems for sure. Uh, so this is my workspace. I did move stuff around since I'll be working down here all winter. Generally, I had a similar space upstairs, not so many markers. I just had kind of my art fly markers. I had uh, my Prismacolor pencils, just some like just kind of a little bit of everything just so I could um, work efficiently in a drafting table and that's where I would work in my office so I could be in the heated area of the home but we are doing an expansion and that's that that room is gone that room is torn down it is it is adios so I'm down here for the winter um, this is something I've always had up in my craft room. If you check out my older craft room tours, I'll link the most recent one down below. Um, you have seen that probably this section here, and this was a display from a scrapbook store. So um, anytime a scrapbook store is like changing their displays up, or if a store is going out of business, a drafting store, office supply store, anything like that, they often sell their displays. And um, the scrapbook store owner had sold me these two. They were like EK Success Pen displays for like 10 bucks. And I have water-based markers over here, and I have alcohol pens over here by color. I do have some fine liners and some pencils here as well in this cubby, and it works great. And I mix and match my brands, so it doesn't really bother me that I have, um, you know, Zig Real Brush pens and Tombow markers and Arteza Real Brush pens and uh, all these different brands because they all work together as long as I keep them with the medium that um, that I'm using. And then as another bonus, if somebody asks me, what's the difference between a pro marker and a um, Prismacolor marker, I can just grab them and show them, like if I was live streaming or something like that. I think I want to do some more live streaming. I just haven't, like, I haven't buckled down uh, to get back into it. And with the whole YouTube studio changing a little bit, I hope I still remember how. It's been a while. Um, and then I took all my grays and my uh, my browns and stuck them over here. Uh, these are all pretty much open stock markers, which would be markers that like you go to the store and you buy a few out of the cabinet and then, you know, I just kind of tuck them in their color families because alcohol markers, I find they all work really well with each other. So there's no point to keep them separate unless I have like a full set of something, um, then I will keep it in its case. If I have like a carry bag with a full set, then I will keep that together because that's, I'm likely to grab that and go to a friend's house to color or um, grab it and go upstairs to, you know, maybe work on a project while people are watching football or something like that. When I don't feel like being a hermit in my basement, I'll do that. So um, to keep my, to keep what I have, organized or at least to know what I've got for colors, what I do is I just swatch them out and I've got all my swatches here. This table is actually a door, like a Luan door. When we bought this house, there were these Luan doors on all the closets in the bedrooms and they were always jumping the tracks and you couldn't like, it was very difficult to get in and see everything you had in your closet and put things in and out of your closet. So I just took them down. We took them down. I took the hardware off the ends so they wouldn't stab me or, you know, injure anybody walking by them and they make great doors so my main table is one and this one is is also a door and they're on a couple saw horses and underneath here I have some just some shallow sterilite carts so I have all of my um, swatches I got my Copic ones on top along with a Copic color wheel um, I've got you know the art and flies I've got touch new I've got any, anything that I have in this rack here the swatches are right here and I just stick them underneath there's a, this is like a Dollar Tree. You can get four of these little clips with a little um, magnet on the back for a bucket Dollar Tree. These are great because you can clip these onto your metal palette. Um, actually, you clip this onto your drawing board or clipboard or something when you're painting outside, and you st can stick your metal palette on top, and it'll hold it while you're painting. So these these things are awesome. They're a buck for four. It's a crazy deal. Um, and then up here, I actually have some other swatches. Now I have. 
Um, a couple types of markers that I did these kind of more in-depth swatches for. I did my Ohuhu Classic markers. Those are the ones that have the bullet and the brush tip because I really like them. I like their selection of colors and they, I keep them in the carry bag because they're all together. But I made a really in-depth um, swatch where I've got them all kind of grouped up into blending families. So that was super helpful. I have a video on how I did that and I just added um, the new ones from the 200 set to this. Um, I do some to fully disclose, I'm not some crazy person that buys markers willy-nilly all the time. I do write for the Ohuhu blog and um, and they're a client of mine so I always have their more current products because that's what they want me to use for the articles that I write. So um, that's why I have this insane amount of markers. But I really do like them and I do have a video on how I group my markers and how I swatch them and made these swatch cards with the holes punched out so that I could like see okay what's gonna blend with that and I can kind of hold it up to another my regular marker my other marker swatches and see what will work with what because I swatch every set out on like with little squares and keep that in the marker bag or here with my markers did that make any sense oh my gosh these are supposed to be quick storage tip tour and I already feel like I've got like a craft room tour fully underway and there goes the furnace so uh <laughs> maybe I should start over I'm not starting over we're gonna keep on going I know you guys all understand right okay so I keep these on a little ring. I have my Blick Studio markers also swatched out. I love the Blick Studio markers. I think they're a fantastic deal. You can now get replacement nibs and um, inks for them. And um, I think the nibs would actually fit Copic markers and they are way cheaper. You get three for like $4.99 of the brush nibs or like three chisel nibs for like two bucks. Way cheaper. And uh, they're the, the nice foam rubber, rubber like uh, bendy ones. They're just, they're fantastic. I love refillable products because um, I don't want to have to run out and buy something when I run out of something. I am in the middle of nowhere. I am far away from any stores. Shipping takes forever. So, <laughs> so I just want to have what I need and not have to worry about shopping. I don't like to shop. So, um, so there's that. Um, I keep some stuff that's really used every day. I have this little box here, nothing fancy. I've got um, some glue upside down in here, so it's ready to go. It's not even, this is like a Tombow bottle. It's not even like Tombow. I think it's like Mod Podge or something. I ran out and I didn't want to go to the store. Story of my life. I've got an eraser, a glue stick, some Q-tips for, you know, when you got to smudge or something, you got to smudge it off. Um, some Beacon 3-in-1, which is like cold hot glue because it will grab really well. It's really nice and thick. And an electric eraser that I use occasionally, but I use a lot more now that it's on my table because when it was in a drawer, I never used it. I have my electric pencil sharpener, which gets used daily. And um, next to this here, this little gap, and with my workspace, I try to make use of most of these little uh, nooks and crannies and gaps because I, um, I don't want to waste this area that is very prime real estate, it's stuff that I want to be able to reach. I've got a roll of foam tape, I've got some extra little swatch cards in case um, I don't know, I get a little small set of markers that I want to swatch out. Um, I don't, I generally just swatch out markers and watercolors. I don't bother with color pencils because it's really easy to see what the color is if you look at the wax. It doesn't change when you color so much, so I don't, I don't bother with that. A little notepad, some other extra images to color if I am bored or feel like trying out a marker that I'm not familiar with, and I've got a uh, little mini scoreboard and a little cutting mat that fits in it in case I need to do some cutting. But I also, and this is fairly recent, I got this black cutting mat, and this is, um, it's black on one side, green on the other, and I bought this because um, when I'm filming, I've noticed that it is, it when I have a black surface underneath when I'm filming, the camera does a much better job at getting accurate colors so it just saves me from having to correct when I'm editing and I feel like if you the better quality of the footage that goes into the camera yeah I mean you can color correct and you can do that but if you can bring it into the camera a little closer to what it is in real life then your video is going to look a lot better on the other end when you guys are watching it so it saves a little work and it gives a better product I think um so there's that and then I've just got like a oven liner teflon oven liner sheet that you know you can get these for like three of these for like eight bucks really big size on like Amazon or LTD commodities and it's like the same thing as the Ranger mat um seems to me anyways I don't want to get like sued or anything for libel but uh it seems to be the same thing 
and it's way cheaper. And then I've got some other things. I've got a couple cups for water for when I'm watercoloring, which I'm watercoloring most days. And then if we move over here, we have this um, little white cabinet. I picked this up at Walmart a few years ago because I just needed a little bit more storage. I actually just took a uh, my chameleon markers out of there. I had them here because I'm like, well, I like storing things with other things that they are similar to, such as markers, with markers, but like, uh, they're kind I'd only bring them out in special certain circumstances. They're not an everyday workhorse item, so I'm like, I don't want to take up space there. I've got this little um, dish with a couple handheld sharpeners, a little diamond dot. What do you call those things? A diamond puzzle? I don't do them, but my niece Sarah does, and she gave me an extra one, and they're for, like, picking up those gems to do those diamond embroidery things, but they're great for a little um, embellishment. So she had an extra one. She gave me that with a little... Uh, a little packet of the gummy stuff that goes with it. And I've got a couple lip balms and just like a cosmetic wedge for when I need to like stencil or something. Um, and then I just got a little tiny mini tin of watercolors here for, you know, if I'm, if I'm not really, I'm just kind of doodling around, just, you know, hanging out, doing some mixed media, not working, procrastinating. Um, I don't, I could just, I got some watercolors I can just grab and go with. This is a cute little, um, cute little palette by Etcher. It comes empty and you put what you want in there and it's got another little mixing tray. But um, I thought, you know, it's it's small, it's compact, I can play with it, you know, when I'm avoiding doing something that I should be doing, which is probably starting another freelance project. But, um, you know, that's what happens when you mix business with pleasure, you know? It's like, I do this for fun, but oh, I really should do this for work a little more. Uh, yeah, it's it's tough. It's a hard line to... to uh, and to straddle sometimes. And I have this little dish here. I have a tutorial on this. I got these uh, really inexpensive glass dishes at a thrift store or an antiques um, market, and then I used alcohol inks to tint them. And I just keep my camera cards and lens cap, just kind of like, you know you need them handy. They're just, you know, you don't want to spill anything on them. And so I just put that up here. And that sits right on top of this other one that's just like it that's got my um, stamp cleaner pad. I got this for $1.50 at the stamp show last year. It's like the Lawn Fawn one, but it's generic and it's cheap. It was probably one of those, um, you can get them at like Walmart. I think they're like, uh, I think they're meant for like exercising and you wet them and you put them on your neck and they keep you cool while you're running or something like that. I think it's that same material. And I think this lady that has a scrapbook store just chopped them up and sold them for cheap and just works for me. It's all I needed. It does work really good, surprisingly. And, um, so when I, this dries out really quick and then when I'm ready to use it, I just spray it and let it absorb the water and I use it and then I let it dry out before I put this, uh, put it with this tray. This tray is usually underneath because it sits better like that. And, oh, this is cute. I got this at the Dollar Tree. This, I use this when I'm just mixing, like if I got a mix of markers, I can scribble on my markers and pick it up with a blending marker. If I'm just tr trying to do a soft blend, um, I thought that was really cute and just a really cute little temporary palette. Now from that same person at the scrapbook store, I got some of those uh, blending brushes that are like the life-changing brushes, but they weren't, they're like a generic one, but they worked great. And then I was on, um, I was on Amazon and I saw they have these white bristled ones and it, they were really cheap. There was five of them and um, I think they were like 10 bucks or something. So I really liked that because I could see the colors on them, kind of like my Judykins uh, color dusters and they were great. And so I just put them up there so I wouldn't forget to use them. I use these call erase pencils pretty much anytime I'm going to do markers or watercolor even. I just do my sketching with a similar pencil. And I like to do it with these because I can erase if I make a mistake, but the color lines, they're not waxy enough to resist watercolor and they're not waxy enough to be picked up by my markers, but they kind of just fade away as you're layering over them because they're so, you can pick a color that's similar to what you want to, um, what you want to draw. So I really like them. They're kind of like my pick of the year. I think I got them maybe a year or two ago, they'd be my pick for whatever year I got them. They would be a pick. I don't do picks, but if I did picks, if I did a favorite things, color race pencils would be one of them because I like them. And I got pastel pencils. I got my mermaid markers. The, those are fun. I really like them. I should use them a lot more. And then I've got some random like exacto knives and um, pokey tools and bone folders and stuff like that, that 
it, it seems like I'm grabbing these items daily, even though they're not very pretty and they're not like, they don't seem like an essential tool, but they really are because I grab them all the time. So that's what's up there. Uh, obviously I have a little more room to put things in if I want to, but I try not to, I don't like to have to reach behind things and move things over and take things down to get what I want. So if it's stuff I need to ex access a lot, I try to keep it pretty sparse so I don't have to move a bunch of stuff. Now this is a little full, but um, I like to have likes with likes, so I have all my acrylic paint pens in here, and I like to use these over watercolors and over marker illustrations a lot. They're a lot of fun, so I can set that down on my table or just grab the few colors that I want and then slide it right back here. And then I made sure I had a lot of headspace here. I think you can see that. I'm just going to move my light a little bit. Ah, let's see. Maybe that's a little bit better. Um, I have my Prismacolor pencils in this old spice rack and it works really well and even when it's in there, I don't really have to pull it out. I can see my colors. I have a set of watercolor pencils here. Those are the Spectrum Noir Aqua Blend. I really like those watercolor pencils. I have the full set in here um, and a few Albright Drewer random uh, open stock ones that I had. And um, all my other watercolor pencils are in their tins because I don't need to have that many out. I find that that's a really reliable... Um, a really reliable assortment. I don't really want for anything if I have those out. And I've got my Prismacolor color pencils because those are the pencils that I use most often. For the type of work that I do, it's more um, a single layer sketchy on top of other stuff. It just works really well because they're a little more opaque than say Polychromos or the Arteza pencils, um, which I also like, but those are the ones that I'm, that I'm gonna grab first. So these are the within reach things. Now right here I have um, my most used watercolor brushes, I got my Creative Mark Mimics, I've got um, also some new quills that I want to use a little bit more by uh, Roya Mac from Australia, the Mikador company there, and um, there's also a pencil in here, shouldn't be pencil in there, I've got toothbrushes for spattering, uh, ink and whatnot on my paintings, and then in the back there, I just have a little, um, a little bin with some often used sizes of clear blocks for when I'm rubber stamping. So now we're going to take a look at uh, what's underneath the table and I'm just gonna tip the camera down I'm not gonna go too in depth here there's a little trash can actually this is kind of neat this is my trash can uh, let me move my light here too so hopefully it's a little bit better for you I hope so is it in your way no I think you can see um, these are like those popcorn buckets that you get at the drive-in and they are make the best waste paper baskets. I have one in my car for trash, and it fits like um, you know, a, a shopping bag from like the grocery store, really well. And then I can just um, dispose of that when I'm when it's full, like once a week or whatever. Uh, so under here, I have some stuff that's like kind of the stuff I use a lot, and I've got some stuff that I hardly ever use, but this is just a really great space for it. And here's Tally, my cat. She's the studio cat. My other cat rarely comes down here. My dog never comes down here, and that's why she's down here. Um, so, I'll, oh, I want to show you how I store my watercolor tubes, because I don't keep stuff in their original packaging usually. So what I do is the my workhorse paints that I really use a lot, um, like if I review a set of watercolor tubes, I might decide that, oh, those aren't really for me. I don't really like them. Um, then I wouldn't put them in here. I would give them away or I would maybe use them in like beginner's classes. Um, so I have them sorted by color. So I have all my greens together, my um, yellow ochres, earth tones, uh, purples. And these are just in little uh, bins. You can find these little bins at any dollar store. You can see these are usually like three for a dollar at the Dollar Tree. If you have a different dollar store, it's probably very similar priced. You can also save little boxes that like, um, you know, tea comes in. If you say if you drink like Celestial Seasonings tea, they would have there in a box that's about half of the size of this. So you could just like save a bunch and um, I'll put them together or you could take cardboard or foam core and just make your own. The cat is rubbing against the tripod. So if you get a little seasick, it's not my fault, it's hers. She's, she's rubbing on the thing. So I have like yellows and I have warm reds, cool reds, warm blues, cool blues. So I just divided it up the way that made sense for me. And then after I had this all organized, um, my friend April over who sells Renaissance paints sent me some, um, and it was her and the company Renaissance sent me their line in tubes. And I did fill a palette with these, but I kept these separate because I didn't have room in the other storage. It was, these are lovely paints too. Um, and I also have like an extra palette and these Mikador watercolors and a tube bringer, which really does get the extra bits of paint out there. Um, so sometimes if you overgrow, you have to just kind of 
you got to make do. you got to start a new drawer. I have a tip on how you can make these drawers removable if you have the kind that don't want to be removed because that's really irritating. Um, what else do I use a lot? Oh, this is something I use all the time, which isn't like, you know, that interesting. Well, is, is it interesting? I use it all the time, so maybe it's something you might want to keep handy. You might use it all the time, too. But I keep things like, remember these Creative Memory Shape Cutters? I use these stinking things weekly. Like, even if I'm not scrapbooking or making cards, I still seem to need to grab these out to trace a circle or to cut a circle. And they're so much easier than grabbing a die, I find. Um, I have protractors and... Um, all sorts of different, like a rolling ruler from, I think I got this at a dollar store, but I remember the infomercial, I love that thing. Um, and I use these quite frequently, so little, little triangles, this is from high school, it's like a lip smacker, <laughs> like I had a lip smacker stationery set, and, uh, and little Fisker shape cutters, I, but I still use these, so I'm not going to get rid of it just because there's more shinier, prettier supplies out in the world, the crafting world. I'm over that. <laughs> I'm going to use what works, what I've always said. This is kind of a, um, I was going through some bins and I found some stuff that I wasn't going to keep everything, but there were a few things that I thought I would use. And, um, like I had these tags from an Annie's Kit Club, and I thought those were kind of pretty. I would use those on a few cards. And I found some gold rub-ons that I thought were really nice. And I've also got a few rolls of adhesive, of score tape, because I know that when I need something stronger than my ATG gun, which is actually... Where is that? It's, um, it was hanging up there, but it's, see oh, no, it's hanging right behind me. You can't see it from where I'm sitting. But um, when I need a stronger adhesive, I can reach down and grab these. And I've got a mini paper trimmer in there, too. And, um, oh, yeah, mega pads. I kind of showed you this in my video where I shared how to remove those drawers, but I keep my ink pads handy. I can set this right on my table if I'm using peg stamps especially, but um, I even tend to grab these often because I can have a lot of colors and a little bit of space and it's really handy. If I want to go to a friend's house and scrapbook, all I have to do, or make cards, all you have to do is dra grab like one tray or even the drawer and I could call it good. And um, I got little foam squares, the yellow foam squares of yellow foam square fame. <laughs> um, a little bow maker. Oh, this is, uh, I use this a lot too. These are my blending tools, and these are little bottle cap. They're makeup wedges that I folded in half and glued into bottle caps. They work beautifully. I prefer them to the Store Bought Ranger blending tools. These are Judy Kins color dusters. These work great. I have a set that I use for dye inks and a set that I use for pigment or distress oxide inks, usually distress oxide inks. And I also made some little blenders for distress oxide inks, and I use these quite a bit too. And they're again just the foam, the cosmetic foams, but I put them in glass chess pieces because that way I could tell them apart from my bottle cap ones so I'll know what to use them with because you don't want to mix and match your um, your pigment ink and your dye ink blending tools because the Otherwise, you'll have to wash them. It's not the end of the world. You just wash them. But I don't want to wash them. I want to let it let ink build up and not waste any of it. So um, I think everything else is pretty much, you know, pretty much the same. I did put all my Distress inks and Distress Oxides together so I can just bring this up because I tend to use this on the big table doing real big messy stuff and I like to have it all handy together. Now one other thing that I changed... Oh, wait a minute. You know what? I want to show you one more thing because I used to have beads there and I'll show you where I put my beads in another video. But um, one other thing, and I was debating about this, so I want to share this with you just in case... Uh, you want to weigh in or you have an opinion. Um, I have my laptop here because I often will be looking at a reference photo or have a few reference photos pulled up while I'm working on a video, uh, like a watercolor video, and sometimes sometimes I'll be watching TV as I am screwing around and not working, and I'll have like some Netflix on or something like that, and I'll be doodling in a sketchbook when I should be working, um, so that's awfully fun to do. <laughs> I can tell you so many fun ways to waste time in your studio. That should be a whole video. Um, I decided to keep my yarn here instead of putting like more coloring medias here. Because originally that's what I thought I would do because I'm like, oh, wouldn't it be fun if I can reach my pastels and I can reach all these things? But then I thought that's going to be very distracting. And as we know, I don't need any more distractions when I'm trying to buckle down and get some work done. So I decided to leave my yarn here because it's fairly soothing and uniform. If I am making a card, I do tend to reach in there and grab some funky fibers 
because I like fibers onto cards and tags. I know it's a little passe, but I still like it, so I still do it. Um, and I think it's, you know, it's just, it's nice to have these soft things next to the hard things, I think, like as far as just the way it feels to sit here. And behind me, I usually, I don't right now, but um, I have a space heater and I actually switched it to an oil filled heater because I had one on the, on the um, suggestion of one of you guys. And I feel like such a clod because I didn't write down the person who left that comment because it's quiet so it's nice to have a quiet heater while I am working and I wanted to mention that and I went to look up the thing but the internet wasn't um, I don't know why the internet wasn't working right now but anyway it wasn't and I couldn't look it up and now I feel like a clod because I was gonna do that before I filmed this video so I apologize but thank you for the idea it was completely awesome and fabulous and I appreciate it um, but yeah that's uh, that's pretty much my workspace um, I'm trying to think if there's, I've got a crocodile just like out of reach up on a hook that I can stand up and grab it if I need to. My ATG gun is right here hanging from another hook. Ooh, there, just dropped some paint. Um, and then behind me in all of these binders here are, um, with a, I've got a National Geographic map taped to the edges. This, these are all my, my unmounted stamps and um, they're sorted by theme, not by brand. It just makes sense for me because I don't really do, um, I don't really, like, I stamp for fun. I don't do much stamping for work. I mean, I have a couple of sponsors that are stamp companies that I'll do videos for, but for the most part, my stamping is kind of just like, it's a hobby, it's fun, I enjoy it. And I don't, like, worry about my stamps being discontinued. I feel bad if I use something and I show it in a video and you can't find it anymore. But, you know, you can always substitute and, you know, use what you have and make something that's totally unique that way. So I think you guys, most of you guys are totally cool with that. I mean, you might be bummed that you can't find something, but um, I think that there's plenty of people that that are encouraging us to buy more stamps so I can just hopefully maybe help you use the ones you have I don't know I've got a lot I do enjoy that collection it's kind of like I think if you collect paperweights or you collect um, pottery or something you know it's but it's a useful collection it's a lot of fun oh my gosh this video has been 26 minutes long wow that's a long time thanks for watching that's a big commitment guys um, <laughs> well you see my workspace <laughs> and this is how it looks a good portion of the time uh, she hasn't been getting on this table as much as the other table. That's another reason I tend to sit over here because she uh, she doesn't um, usually climb up here. Oh, oh, look at her. She's trying to drink paint water and there's no paint water in there. That's so sad. I get her a drink. She does have a drink. She has fresh water. Don't worry. But uh, she she prefers the paint water. <laughs> Silly cat. I always make sure it's clean when I leave the desk. I don't leave dirty paint water around for that reason. But there's my workspace. Um, stay tuned for more videos of things I've changed in my craft room since last year's tour. And until next time, happy crafting.